I just got the platinum trophy for one of the greatest video games of all time. Oh, don't worry, dude. That scar across your face is about to be three sizes bigger. It's about to be growing like the Grinch's heart up in here. Or the throat. The Last of Us Part 2 opens up with Tommy and Joel having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation about Ellie and Joel's estranged relationship. The last time we seen Joel, he was schwacking a hospital full of fireflies to rescue Ellie, but years have passed since then, and now he lives a much simpler life, patrolling the wilderness in Wyoming with his brother Tommy. While on one of these patrols, Tommy and Joel run into a young woman named Abby who is trying her damnedest to not be eaten by a horde of zombies. She tells the two brothers that if they help her, she will take them to a house that they can use to ride out this horde. What the two brothers don't realize is that Abby is a cold murderous b that just traveled 860 miles to cosplay Nelly Corda and play top golf with Joel's face. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have went with our names. Because they have. Them. Oh, no! the other one. <laughs> Laura, all clear? He's out. Put him against the wall. Uh, Abby about to get the ball in the hole in the club, play a full game of golf in Florida. Yeah, and all of her friends are also about to be pushing up daisies over the next couple months. Although imagine being, I mean, I can understand Abby's point a little bit. I get it. The guy did kill her dad. Meanwhile, as the marijuana burns, Ellie and her girlfriend take their turns getting down like a dirty rap song and are interrupted by their boss letting them know that Joel and Tommy have gone missing. I told you a real fucking story. I, I mean, if that's what you're story. down for. Do you hear that? Jesse? Just stay there, okay? Are you just, okay? Just, will you wait, please? What are you doing? Are you kidding me? You're supposed to be on patrol. We we There's are. A lizard outside. Is that weed? Why are you here? People are counting on you. You get that? What we do matters. Well, then why aren't you at the fucking lookout? Because Tommy and Joel didn't show up. What do you mean? We waited for them for an hour. I was looking for their horses when I saw lights. The group decides that the fastest way to find Joel and Tommy is to split up and coincidentally, Ellie is the first person to stumble on the horror show that is taking place at the Baldwin Mansion. Oh yeah, slice that dude. Should have sliced your throat instead of your face. You're gonna fucking die! Joel, get up. Joel, fucking get up. It doesn't work that way, Ellie. Please stop. Please don't shoot. Joel, please get up. No! Oh, 
Oh. Ellie's taking names right now. She's taking names and she'll snatch the souls later. After Ellie watched her adopted father's face being used as an in-home Tiger Woods simulator, she decides that the only remaining way to bring closure to their fractured relationship is to kill every member associated with Joel's brutal par three execution. I could. You gotta try to lock me up? I prefer that you stay. That's not gonna fucking happen. I prefer that you stay, but I know you better. You going with her? Yeah. So you're just gonna sneak out of here. I mean, that was the plan. Yeah. On foot? Yeah. I told the stable to let you out with your horse. Grab some ammo, too. Now that's what I'm talking about. You want us to go save your mans? Let's do it. Just uh, do me a favor and bring my dumbass husband home in one piece, please. Okay, I, I, I think we can accomplish that. Luckily, Ellie has found her ride or die in Dina. As Ellie's girlfriend, Dina decides that she will join us on our trip to Seattle and help us to avenge Joel. This trip, while difficult, proves fruitful, and not long after we enter the Seattle Territory, we get captured by a few members of Joel's Par 4 execution party. Holy f***aroni! That was a bit much. Oh, don't worry, dude. That scar across your face is about to be three sizes bigger. It's about to be growing like the Grinch's heart up in here. Or the throat. Escaping from the group of savages calling themselves the WLF allows the couple to narrow their search for more members of the Baldwin Mansion incident and they discover they are taking shelter at an abandoned radio station. Before we head to the radio station, some light exploration leads to some supreme loot and the first four trophies in the game. Okay, I got some weapons parts. Ooh, starter set! Find five trading cards. First trophy in the game was for finding five trading cards. Looting wins again. Hmm. Apprentice! Learn a player upgrade. So there we go. We got another trophy. I wanted this for the 25% out. Look at that. It was a good idea I waited. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe there ain't anything good here. Aha! A workbench. I was right. It was a good call. Ooh, yeah, I could probably almost max this thing. Tinkerer, baby! Upgrade a weapon. So, like, the third trophy. For, ooh, yeah, where did she... Where was she hiding that? Oh, I can actually finish upgrading my pistol this time instead of getting shot at. Mechanist fully upgrade a weapon. Wait a minute, but that's not. Oh, I did fully upgrade it because I did capacity first earlier. Oh, okay. My bad. Shelter might have been a strong word to use because upon further exploration of the radio station, we find a bunch of dead soldiers and our next target looking like Boromir at the end of Fellowship of the Ring. It's definitely about to hit the fan. Oh, dude, she's dead as shit, fam. Leah. You sure? Yes. Well, good. It's one last person we gotta kill. Guess the universe really wanted her dead, huh? 
Finding the freshly murdered body of Leah Achilles at the radio station gave us the potential location of the remaining members of the Salt Lake crew. But just before we were able to pinpoint their exact location, we were attacked by a large group of wolves and are forced to escape into the subway. This particular subway is crawling with wolves, clickers, and a new enemy called a shambler that has the ability to dutch oven entire rooms with acidic clouds of methane. After schwacking a few shamblers and outrunning a massive horde of clickers, we stumble into a movie theater and Ellie decides that we should rest up and strategize our next move, but Dina has other ideas. <laughs> well, we know it's not my baby. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not yours. <laughs> what are we? <sighs> yeah, that's what gonna be a bit of a pickle. Now? Nothing. I just need to rest for a second. Are you fucking kidding? How long have you known? It was late a few weeks ago. A few weeks? We could have... We could have still turned back. Well, I didn't know... I wasn't sure, okay? I didn't want to be a burden. Well, you're a burden now, aren't you? Eesh. You need to work on your choice of words there, girl. That's not the right words. You suck at this relationship thing, Ellie. I'm just being a little bit honest with you. Make sure this place is secured. Finding out that your girlfriend is pregnant with not your baby would be a real kick in the knackers. Luckily, Ellie doesn't have knackers, so she storms off to play some guitar and reminisce about the days when life was simpler. This begins a flashback section of the story that lets us explore a museum with Joel and earn us another trophy in the process. Haha, <laughs> there it is. Looks good on you. Put a hat on your companion. So we did have to put a hat on a dinosaur. It was just a different type of dinosaur. That's what it is. Okay. Exploring museums might be young Ellie's idea of fun, but new Ellie's idea of fun is ice cold revenge. And despite the bun in Dina's oven, Ellie pushes forward into the land of sparkly vampires alone this time. While being alone in Seattle in a full-blown apocalypse scenario might seem rough at first, we actually run into Jesse of all people and he helps us cross the city and make it to the hospital. Where's Abby? You still hear his screams? I hear them every night. Yeah. Yeah, that little bitch got what he deserved. Fucking <laughs> ah! Oh, Stop. you done did it now. Oh, now I'm gonna have to kick the shit out of you. You can't escape this. Stealth is for ninjas and Navy SEALs, and Ellie Rambo is neither of those things. So after an extended chase sequence through the hospital, Ellie corners another member of the Salt Lake crew, and unfortunately for Nora, the only interrogation tool we have at our disposal is a steel pipe. That's what I'm talking about, baby. I knew you were my favorite for a reason. Think about what he did. How many people are dead because of him? Last chance. I'm not giving up, my friend. You say that. You say that. I got my ways. Oh yeah, baby. Let's just start breaking shit. 
Doesn't need to show it. <coughs> the only thing that could have possibly made killing Nora any better is if she got the Daddy Zeus treatment from the end of God of War 2, and we could have kept interrogating her until this game began to feel like a shovelware title. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you are, the game only lets us have fun for three short swings and then we go back to the theater for some much needed R&R. At this point, we finally get to see the toll that our revenge tour has been taking on us. All of the murder, relationship trouble, and daddy issues seems to be coming to a point as Nora spilt the beans and told us that Abby is hiding out in the abandoned aquarium by the pier. So Ellie once more ventures off in search of Owen's aquatic petting zoo and as we begin fighting our way through a pack of wolves, we get an additional trophy. That one puckered me up a little bit. That one puckered me up a little bit. Not gonna lie, that one puckered me up a little bit. Okay, well, I gotta try and make another silencer. If it'll let me make more than one silencer. No. Ha ha! Specialist, baby! Learn all player upgrades in one branch. I'm okay with that. Upon closer infiltration of the aquarium, we don't find Abby, but we do manage to find Owen and Mel. As we interrogate the couple for information about Abby's location, Mel gets a tad feisty and apparently we have just enough time to commit triple homicide. I can fuck up! Hey, just, just dome one of them and then tell the other one they can live if they answer. That's what I'm doing. I'm shooting the dude. I can take the chick 1v1. Oh yeah, I love this scene right here. Let her stab you in the shoulder. feel bad about it now I mean that's basically just a collateral it's like getting a through and through in cod it's a double kill baby just treat it as such after her three latest murders including one unborn infant Ellie finds it best to forget about completing her revenge tour and decides to head back to Seattle, but then all of her revenge finally catches up to her. Oh shit. Jesse, stand up. Oh, he's dead. In the air, I shoot this one too. Don't you do it, Ellie. Get out of here. Stand up now. Don't you fucking dare. Shut the fuck up. Oh. Fuck. All right. Stop. Stop. Hey, you got what you, was coming to you, bitch. Toss your weapon. Oh, go F Toss yourself. Your no, no. I know why you killed Joel. Dina. He did what he did to save me. Dina, come on, baby. There's no cure because of me. I am the one that you want. Just let him go. All my friends. You killed my dad. We let you both live. And you wasted it. This next section of the game forces you to play as Abby and starts off with a flashback in which Abby and her father rescue a young zebra from a broken fence. While many people would assume that this will be a nicer flashback, it suddenly takes a much darker turn. In the fucking building? Is that... Abby. No! Abby, don't look. Dad! Dad! No! 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 
No sympathy. After the flashback, we cut to present day as Abby and Manny get prepared to go back out behind the wire. Before embarking on our mission, we first meet up with Mel, our pregnant doctor, grab our most faithful companion, and then kick Manny's ass at the gun range for another trophy. Ah, sharpshooter! Win the marksmanship competition. Oh, too easy. I forgot that was a trophy. I'll take it. As we push on through to the fob, we get attacked by a group of militants riding horses and shooting us with bows and mollycocks. Considering our enemy's use of pre-Civil War weaponry and our access to military Humvees and Freedom Seeds, we eventually schwack them all and then proceed on to the FOB. At this FOB, we finally discover just how horrible the WLF actually are as we walk through their interrogation area. See? <laughs> Don't let him fall asleep. Yes, sir. Let's go up. Keep in mind, they're supposed to be the good guys, supposedly. You just got that guy naked, strapped to a chair, and slicing pieces off of him. Not letting him Too sleep for days on end. The leader of the WLF doubles down on their horrible actions and tells Abby that she is taking point on their upcoming mission to clear the island of their religious enemies, the Seraphites. Abby tries to fight for the right to rescue Owen from behind enemy lines, but she is denied by Isaac, the aforementioned leader who just planned this upcoming genocide. Obviously, Abby breaks the rules and ventures off on her own to go find Owen, and while perusing Chinatown, we get the next trophy. Oh, no, that's not the right way. Ooh, is that a golden egg? <gasps> that's the strange relic! There's a trophy for this, fam! That's a precursor orb from Jack and Daxter! Relic of the Sages! Find the strange artifact. They add this in every single game. It's a precursor orb from the Jack and Daxter trilogy. After finding the precursor orb and schwacking a few groups of Seraphites, we flash back to a few months earlier when we first visited Owen at his hideout in the aquarium. And while being mildly flirtatious, we get the high score at the archery game and the next trophy. Hey, put my name up on that board. Earn the high score in the archer game. Another trophy down. Hell yes. After all the fun and games were finished, we snap back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity, slowly choking us to death as we swing from our necks in a rainstorm. The Seraphites plan to free us from our sins via disembowelment, but just before we can be turned into a human pasta rack, a rogue group of scars shows up and frees Abby from her pending execution. Freeing ourselves from the noose was the easy part. Escaping the horde of zombies that arises in the dark is quite another. Luckily, we run into Big Bertha, and after a short fight to the death, we get all of our weapons back, and as we venture back towards Owen's crib, we manage to get two additional trophies. Ooh, the Magnum. Sorry, hunting pistol. In the field. Find 12 workbenches. Hey, mint condition. Find five coins. Look at that. I got it for Alabama. 2002. Good year. After finding an abandoned trailer that Lev and Yara can use as a short-term hideout, we head back to the aquarium so that Abby can foxtrot uniform Charlie Kilo. Abby. Oh, 
little bit of prime nudity here. Let's show it for like two seconds. Oh gosh, man, he's all burnt to shit. After Abby is done parking the beef bus in Tuna Town, she wakes up from a nightmare. Not because she just became a home wrecker, but because she feels bad for leaving Lev and Yara alone at the trailer from earlier. So we leave Owen lying in bed like a bad one night stand and then take the walk of shame all the way back to the construction site to rescue the Seraphites and snag another trophy. Oh, tools of the trade. What? Craft every item. Okay, I'll take that. I didn't know that was a trophy, but I'll take it. After we rescue the two Seraphites, we find out that Yara needs to have her arm surgically removed, and this forces us to head to the hospital where Ellie eventually schwacks Nora. During this acrophobia-inducing section of the game, we find an additional two trophies related to character upgrades. Dude, I was getting... Look at that. Survival training. Learn 25 player upgrades. Hell yeah. I was going to say, I'm getting so many upgrades just from the massive amount of Percocets I've been finding lying around here. I also need to find some loot before this final showdown, or we're all going to die. Just in case. Hey, Journeyman! Find all of the training manuals. Okay. I'm down with that. Amputee or not, Yara is forced to head back to the Seraphite camp to rescue Lev, who has decided to return home in order to save their mother from religious execution. Coincidentally, as we are headed there to rescue the two Seraphites, the wolves are headed that way to murder them, and in the impending battle, Yara unfortunately gets gunned down. What the hell are you doing? I need you to hear me out. What's that behind you? He saved my life. Move out of the way. We'll deal with you back home. He's not one of them, please. Abby, move. God damn it, he's just a kid. Told you, he don't you care. Three seconds to get away from that scar. One. You really gonna shoot me? Two. Yeah, oh, no, he will. Moving. No! What the fuck? As if Yara being schwacked wasn't enough, we return to Owens and find the bodies of our boyfriend, his baby mama, and his unborn baby. This sends Abby into another vengeful spiral and leads us back to the theater where she murdulates Jesse and kicks off the ultimate fight to the death between her and Ellie that leads to a decision of biblical proportions. That's a weird ass, considering you killed her pregnant friend. Should have killed her. Should have sent it. Ultimately, Abby decided to spare the remaining members of the Jackson group, and this allowed Ellie and Dina to settle down on a farm with Jesse Jr. One would think this would be the natural conclusion to the game, but Ellie still has not completed her revenge tour and eventually leaves her new family behind to ensure that Abby pays for the sins that she committed. During this adventure, we discover that Abby has been kidnapped by a group of slave traders, and in the process of finding this out, we unlock a new weapon and another trophy. Trackster Resort. Hey! High Caliber! Find all of the weapons! That, I think that's a gimme trophy. I don't think that's actually that hard, 
unless you go out of your way to not find one of the weapons. As we ventured further into the slave trader's encampment, a few freed slaves inform us that Abby has been strung up to die in the punishment fields. Rather than just shoot Abby while she is helpless, we decide to free her and then at the last minute change our mind for a final showdown. Okay, there you go, Ellie. I mean, you do not have a boxing career in your future. I hate to tell you. Okay, this is a bit much. There you freaking get on top of her. Just sit on the back of her head. There it is right there. You should be using your knees, not your hands. You can put more body weight on her that way. Not saying I know how to drown somebody, but I'm just saying I know a better. Oh. No, you keep holding her there. Just keep holding her there. Oh, that's not a button mesh. Keep doing it. It's almost over. Come on. After allowing Abby and Lev to escape for a final time, Ellie returns to her empty house, realizing that she is permanently scarred from her revenge tour, and then just decides to leave her old life behind her and venture alone into the great unknown. The one downside, or the one thing I have to say about this game is that, ooh, what I had to do? Complete the story. It is what it is. It is what it is. First playthrough in the books. With the first playthrough officially behind us, we get to clean up the rest of the remaining trophies on fun mode, which is where we replay the game on the easiest difficulty with the best gameplay modifiers turned on. These gameplay modifiers make us nearly invincible and grant us infinite ammo that makes the remaining trophies a cakewalk. The remaining trophies in the game require us to explore every area, find every last collectible, including trading cards, safes, upgrade magazines, workbenches, artifacts, coins, and purchase every player and weapon upgrade in the game on the way to our next platinum trophy. I know... Yeah, that, this one right here. This should be where we get Nathan Drake's necklace and a trophy. Ah, there it is. Cool. Sick Parvis Magna. Ah. Hell yeah. Hey, so great and small. Find the engraved ring, Sick Parvis Magna, from the Uncharted series. That is Nathan Drake's ring, or Francis Drake's ring that Nathan Drake wears. Valiance. That place right there. Valiant Music Shop. Hey, Valiant oh, Music shit! Shop. Sightseer! Visit every location in downtown Seattle. So, that was an easy trophy. I completely forgot about that one. Good thing hey, the collectibles run forced me to do it. Or I completely forgot about this. And it's wide open. Man. I'm pretty sure that is enough for the final upgrade in the game. Pretty sure that was enough. It is. So here's another trophy, fam. Scratch what I said. I don't know if I said 18 or 19, but we got us another one right here. Arms master fully upgrade all weapons hell to the yizzle baby too easy 30 23 04 
Ah, no perks. Hey, safe cracker! Unlock every safe in the game. I don't know if that's the last safe in this playthrough or if there's more, but I mean, hey, a trophy's a trophy. Let's go, baby. Let's go. And that is enough for the final upgrade necessary for the trophy. So here it is, all upgrades in The Last of Us Part 2. Survival expert, learn all player upgrades. So there you have it. The alley across the street. Go. Crawl under the truck. So it should be in this hobo cart right here. Or not in by the hobo cart. And that is an Arkansas coin. And the last coin we have to find in the game, the Numis Modest trophy. I don't really know what Numis Modest sounds like, but it sounds a lot cooler than Coin Collector. I'm going to have to Google that one. What you got? Hey, don't be dropping wordy dirds at me. Yeah, it should be everybody. Let's knock out this. Ooh, prepared for the worst. Find all the workbenches in the game, baby. Too easy. Too easy. We're done with the workbenches. Let's go. Right there. Next to the boombox. Ooh, master set. Find all the trading cards in the game. Let's go. We're just cooking these collectibles. And that is the Spark Thug, the final trading card in the game. Let's go, baby. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this last collectible. It is over here. It's right here on the desk. This is it, baby. The last collectible in the game. Unless I missed one. archivist find all artifacts and journal entries and every last one of them the platinum trophy for the last of us part two remaster let's freaking go let's go those of you that are fans of the channel might be wondering where the fuck is the resident evil Don't worry, I am still working through the 12 canon Resident Evil games, but I have decided that every third video on the channel will be a fan-suggested game that gets selected at random. If you would like to see a certain video game completed on either PlayStation or Xbox, be sure to join the Discord and comment your game suggestion via the Game Suggestions channel. You can also suggest any game that you want via the comment section below. If you like this video and you would like to watch another one like it, click one of the videos below. If you would like to catch these videos live, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you never miss a live stream or a new video.